Hi, welcome to Spiral Paradox. I'm Logost. This is my first video on this channel, and I hope you find what I have to say interesting. Recently, I've been reflecting on my political perspective. As a result, I've come to realise that tunnel vision on this one political value gives us blind spots and prevents us from seeing the bigger picture. If you asked me which political value or principle is most important to me, I'd say with no hesitation, liberty. Liberty is very important, however there are other factors that must be considered, which affect the nation and its people. At this point, it's relevant to draw upon moral foundations theory and its proponent Jonathan Haidt. The theory outlines six moral values which people value intuitively rather than by reasoning. These are care, forgiveness, loyalty, authority, sanctity and liberty. First, let's address care, which I will refer to as security because the issues this conception of care involve are fundamentally interwoven with security and danger and financial security. And in line with this, Haidt identifies care as the opposite of harm, which suggests security. Many people, left or right, would consider security to be the most important political principle. To many in the left, basic human dignity must be secured for everyone, especially the vulnerable. To many conservatives, security is a requirement for maintaining a peaceful society with law and order, whereby people can flourish. Fairness is another such value. Fairness, in short, is about everyone being treated proportionately in accordance to the same rules. The reason for this is that if people are following different rules, people will feel that others are cheating. Often this principle manifests as a desire for equality, for some of opportunity and others of outcome. Loyalty as a value is about identification with or loyalty to one's family, community, group or nation. For example, one might prioritise family above all else. Alternatively, it could be identification with one's sports team or even simply patriotism. The latter is typically more prevalent among conservatives, however the value is also present in all identity politics of all stripes. Authority is another of these values and involves submission to whatever is deemed legitimate authority. An obvious but extreme manifestation of this is authoritarian or reactionary ideology such as fascism. However, in its mildest form, it can simply be deference to the law. Conservatives tend to value authority more than the left because they tend to be more conscientious and so view the authority or higher status in social hierarchies as something legitimately earned by hard work. The left is typically in favour of flattening or eliminating hierarchy. For example, democratic socialism's advocacy for redistribution of the wealth or anarchist left opposition to hierarchy altogether. The last value Haidt outlines is sanctity slash purity, which he defines as disgust or abhorrence of things, food or actions. The opposite to this is degradation, which explains how conservatives are more concerned with degradation or degeneracy as they see it than those on the left. It may seem strange in the contemporary West, however in the Middle Ages this was considered very important. It was a very traditional and religious society whereby avoidance of the impure was very important to people. Although it's worth noting that at the time there were more frequent dangers to health which would have triggered disgust and therefore conservative attitude towards such things was only natural. A contemporary example of this is the Islamic world where pork is considered unclean, unhealthy and impure. One may speculate that pork going off quicker in the Middle East compared to Europe is a causal factor of this and certainly it would fit the typical pattern of disgust sensibility. For scientists, consider it to be rooted evolutionarily as an adaption for avoidance of faeces and disease. Two interesting facts about disgust, which Jordan Peterson and Haidt have referenced, are that conservatives report higher levels of disgust than the left do, and that psychologically conscientious people, i.e. hard-working people, to put it simply, are more likely to feel higher levels of disgust. Therefore, disgust, conscientiousness and social conservatism align statistically. Despite what one may think, the left is not without desire for purity. This can be seen with the popularity of vegetarianism and healthy eating among the left. Those least prone to disgust are libertarians, 
Haidt shows. Although it's worth noting that classical liberalism and libertarianism share a lot in common and that libertarianism has its roots in classical liberalism. Additionally, it's worth noting that liberalism as a whole these days generally has its roots in classical liberalism. There is a nuance to this, however, since arguably contemporary US liberals largely hold to core values which have most in common with those of the left. Also, they typically prioritize the values linked with Haidt's conceptions of care, financial security also, and fairness, which can be seen in concern for the plight of groups deemed to be oppressed and equality of outcome. Therefore, liberalism is conceptualized here as concerned with liberty and the live and let live attitude. And those among the left, rather, who prioritize care and fairness will not be conceptualized as liberals, even if they self-identify that way. However, those on the left who do value liberty and do have a live and let live attitude are conceptualized here as liberals, for liberalism is not necessarily left or right. Therefore, I argue that liberalism is linked to relatively low levels of disgust. Here, I conceptualize liberty as opposition to coercion by a dominating power or person. This is how Haidt defines it, and generally I think it's a good way to define it. This generally aligns with the negative conception of liberty, otherwise known as freedom from. Liberty is the most important to me of the values outlined here. Liberty can easily be taken away by coercion and tends to be replaced by authoritarianism in the process. Authoritarianism gets in the way of human flourishing, so this is very important. One could survive with a lack of liberty, but it would be a wretched existence. The only way to limit or avoid the taking away of liberty is for liberty to be actively upheld in government. And reduction of liberty has to be opposed. All the key values outlined here are important, however the extent varies. Even the purity sanctity value, with its propensity towards backwards traditionalism at times, is important to a degree. Indulgence in nihilistic hedonism, for example, is detrimental to society if it goes too far, e.g. STDs, single parenthood, and how it links to developmental issues in children, and other things like that. Also, disease and sanitation are certainly important for society's well-being, even if taking disgust and purity too far is detrimental and that is suppressive to a free society. Excess focus on purity can make society intolerant, suppressive and unfree. Similarly, authority being valued too highly could contribute to authority stripping liberty away or autonomy away. But if Jordan Peterson can teach us anything, it's that we, like lobsters, instinctively react to hierarchy and our place in it. Therefore, while social mobility is certainly very important, we would be remiss to do away with concern with authority or to advocate absolute equality. It's not in our genes, nor realistic. Fairness is laudable. However, if interpreted in terms of equality of outcome, there are problems. Firstly, for the state to bring about more of it, there has to be more interference, which is ultimately backed by more violent imposition to the detriment of liberty. Secondly, it creates a dangerous association in people's minds of state authority being associated as a source of fairness, which can make us complacent about how vulnerable we are to authoritarianism. Thirdly, Fairness interpreted as a quality of outcome flies in the face of rule of law, and rule of law is preferable by far to the alternative, the authoritarianism of arbitrary decision making by individuals with excessive discretion. It is consistent application of justice without illiberal unfree discrimination that's essential. This valuable point was first made by the renowned economist Friedrich von Hayek in his book The Constitution of Liberty. Loyalty is fine and good as long as it is not overly collectivist, to the detriment of the individual, and as long as group identification does not become too tribal or intolerant of other perspectives. A common problem in these increasingly polarised times. Think civil nationalism versus ethnic nationalism, and civil discussion rather than personal attacks. You can picture these values as six key pillars of politics, which must not be held in too low or too high regard in society, if society is to have a healthy and flourishing balance. However, note that it's a mistake to deem each of these as equal in importance. For society to be tolerant, civilised, prosperous and pleasant, to live in at all, 
Liberty must be held in high regard. Therefore, I would place liberty as a top priority among these six values. Next in order comes security slash care. For if you picture Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if your basic needs are lacking or feel under threat, liberty will feel like a luxury. If this is to happen on too large a scale, many would disregard the importance of liberty. Therefore, for the majority of people to properly value liberty, they must have their security provided to a sufficient extent. Liberty and security are, to a significant margin, the most important of the six, since they have so much more impact on reduction or exacerbation of misery, as well as on well-being and prosperity. However, importance of the other four is not to be underestimated. Third place goes to fairness. Due to the importance of rule of law and equality before the law, as opposed to discriminatory and arbitrary governance, which is unjust, it's worth noting that the prominence of the detrimental and economically unfeasible principle of equality of outcome in action really drags down fairness as a value relative to, to the top two. Closely behind, in fourth place, is authority. Authority, like hierarchy which it overlaps with, can't be avoided. They are both fundamental and inevitable parts of the human social fabric and the human condition. Any metric for deciding upon who has positions of authority and who succeeds is a hierarchy of competence. Competence here is understood as whatever rewards you with success in a hierarchy based on whatever the value the hierarchy rewards is. However, if not held in its valuable but modest place, authoritarianism is soon to follow. For I would argue that no authority is more prominent or better placed to take our liberty away than the state. Last place goes to purity slash sanctity. This is due in great part to its strong psychological links with baseless traditionalism and disgust. Also, disgust towards non-conformist individuals leads to prejudice towards them, which is harmful to those treated poorly as a result. Proper and healthy judgment of individuals must be based upon reason and not gut emotional reactions. However, there is no doubting its importance as a value, for despite these issues, it is in our rational self-interest to heed our instinctive aversions to feces, disease and genuinely antisocial and harmful outcomes of actions. It has a role, certainly. It is a key pillar and value of importance to society. However, like authority, it is of lower importance. In fact, due to the problems it can involve, it has last place. Still, we must not let this blind us to the beneficial yet modest role it plays. In order for both liberty and security to be put into practice effectively, sufficient provision of public services must be provided so that people can pay proper attention to liberty. A constitution which protects liberty sufficiently is also important. This applies to all nations, for without it there is far less likelihood that liberty will be safeguarded. The realities of hierarchy and authority must be heeded. Purest conformity to political philosophy creates blind spots, not even libertarianism is exempt from this. I understand that balance, of sorts, is needed, or more accurately, a certain just right distribution of concern for each of the six key values. Also, policy must focus on enhancing social mobility so that members of society can feel that they can succeed based on hard work and ability. This is because if people can feel that way, they will as a result deem the social rules and laws as fair, worth abiding by and worth investing in. Furthermore, this would help reduce criminality because I would argue that at least a portion of criminality is due to the perpetrators feeling that the social rules and laws aren't worth following or investing in, and people being able to succeed based on hard work and ability would result in less people being inclined to commit crimes. Lastly, we must not let valid concern for sanitation and healthy living from blinding us to the dangers of unquestioned disgust towards people's behaviour. This is prevalent especially among conservative people and conscientious people. It would be beneficial for them to watch their disgust carefully and try not to let it become too much of a bias towards people due to it. As a finishing note here, it's important to point out that we should uphold each of these six pillars properly, yet not disproportionately either. Relative concern for each would preferably be in a beneficial distribution. It would be greatly beneficial for society and the economy 
if the right balance were to be found and implemented. At this point, I will bring this video to a close. Also, the references for this video can be found on my Steemit blog post, which you can find in the description. Feel free to check it out. I hope you found this thought-provoking. Log us out.